Johnny McGonigal, Bob Flounders. Johnny is rocking. If you're just listening to this, you're missing out. Johnny is, uh, if you're watching, though, you're, Johnny is rocking a Bucky's hat. We just had a nice little convo. I had no idea. I'm a big, I'm a big, like, you know, regional guy. Like, if there's some places to go in certain parts of the country, and Penn State takes us there, like, I want to go there. And it doesn't just have to be a restaurant or a bar. It could be a really cool store. Bucky's is a phenomenon in Texas. But Johnny just told me the only way you can really get to a Bucky's is, is if you go to Texas or just certain parts of Florida. So I'm going to try and figure that out this off season because I'm in with uh, all the things they feature. It's he said it's a Wawa on steroids. So Penn State fans, you might want to you might want to follow Johnny on social media for some uh, for some suggestions because he always finds the good spots. Johnny, that's quite a lead in for a Penn State football podcast. But how are you? It is, Bob. It is. I'm sure James Franklin and the coaching staff, when when they've gone down to recruit guys they out of Texas, they've they've seen Bucky's. They, I'm sure, yeah. they've come across Bucky's before. It, it was it was like a religious experience going to one of those. If anyone, if any listener or uh, you know watcher of the of this podcast has ever been to one, they'll know what I'm talking about. But it is like it's like a compound in there. Yeah. I spent like an hour and a half in there. One of my best friends from. Delco lived in Houston at the time and I was there, I was visiting him uh, last spring and he's like, we're like carving out a couple hours to go to Bucky's. <laughs> and it was, it, it lived up to the hype. It lived up to the hype. I came away with bags full of goodies, including this hat, which I wear on this podcast today. Johnny, I'm going to tell you this uh, at some point during the spring practice sessions, just because you brought this up, I'm going to pull Omari Evans aside Amari is a it was a was, he played at Texas. Uh, he's a they got him out. I think Kylene, Texas, uh, where he was a high school quarterback. And if if no one else is bugging him about uh, are the wideouts going to step up this year, I'm going to ask him about Bucky's and see if it resonates with him. So uh, and if it does, then I think I'm definitely just going to fly down to Texas for a couple days this year, maybe in June, and just hang out at Bucky's because it sounds amazing. And honestly, the and people, if you know, you know, the billboards are incredible. Like they're dad jokes. They're like, it's really funny. It's really good stuff. And when I was in Daytona uh, two weekends ago, there's one in Daytona, and seeing the billboards, I was yeah. like a kid. On, I was like a kid on Christmas morning, Bob. I even got, I even got a Bucky's koozie here. Oh, that thing you've looks awesome. To. You've got to anyway. Oh, man. Anyway, let's say football. Yeah, speaking of Omari Evans, here comes a segue you guys have been ready yeah. for. Um, so we're taping this uh, a little after noon on Wednesday, a little bit later in the week. It's raining as we do this, but hey, it's not snowing, man. And some, yeah, Johnny, tomorrow is a leap year day. I don't know if fans are aware, Penn State fans, every four years, it's uh, February 29th on Thursday. But we're taping this on Wednesday. There is a, uh, towards the end of February, Penn State usually has an availability where uh, people who cover the team can go up there and watch some of the players, including the young players, work out to see if they've kind of changed their bodies at all. And then Chuck Losey, who does a great job uh, as the leader of the strength and conditioning program, or one of the leaders, is kind of made available for 10 or 15 minutes to comment on maybe some of the people he thinks that have really had um, good winter conditioning programs to get them ready for spring drills. I think it's going to be an interesting spring, Johnny. We're going to talk about the NFL scouting combine too, because it's like scouting combine Eve right now. But Johnny, um, I, there's a, barring some really horrible weather, there's a good chance you're going to be up there. Let's just talk about a couple of guys. We think he'll probably get asked about that really kind of need to have had a good winter conditioning to kind of really get them ready uh, for spring drills, either they needed to get bigger, maybe they needed to get a little bit faster. If they were young players, they had to show the staff they physically could handle maybe the rigors of playing uh, early at Penn State. Yeah, Bob, I, I think this is the, the name that will, at least if I get the first question, I'll be yeah. asking about him. Uh, it's not necessarily a guy who needed to change his body, but he is changing positions, something uh -huh. that we've already talked about. Abdul Carter, Love it. Uh, you know, moving from linebacker to defensive end. And this was a piece of news, uh, you know, with that roster update that came out yeah. a couple of weeks ago. You know, it came out, I think it was the day after we talked to James Franklin. Uh, and so we didn't we didn't yeah. get to ask James about the position change or really anyone. So Chuck Losey yeah. will be the first member of the coaching staff that will be made available that we'll be able to ask. Oh, yeah about Abdul and and he would be one that would be able to speak to it too. Obviously Dion Barnes D-line coach and James would be good too, but 
Uh, you know, Chuck Losey is a guy who is around all these players uh, yeah. in the weight room, is monitoring them and setting plans for them, you know, weight gains, speed gains, everything. And, and he would be as good as anyone uh, to speak on a position change of that, of that significance for Penn State. You know, Abdul moving from linebacker to DN. You know, right now I think he's at 6'3", 250, which is, which is pretty good. Does he need yeah. to put on a couple more pounds? Maybe. Uh, hopefully Chuck will give us some more insight on that. But I think that will be, you know, the first player. I think it should be the first player that's asked about, you know, just given the significance of the news of him moving positions and the significance of the player too. You know, we're talking about one of the most disruptive players, not only yeah. in the Big Ten, but in the country. Yeah. Johnny, personally, I feel like I hope he doesn't get too big because I – I think we talked about it. We know why Abdul, one of the reasons, there were a couple of reasons why we think Abdul did it. One is he's just a naturally gifted pass rusher. Another is if you want to get paid, paid in the NFL, if you, if you're, if you're a good player at your position, I think if you're, if you're considered more of an edge rusher than maybe a linebacker or God forbid an off the ball linebacker, off the ball linebacker, I mean, it'll show up, it'll show up, uh, in the direct deposit uh, slip uh, on your account. And for Abdul, I mean, I just, I just think about some of the, the best edge rushers in the NFL. I know we're trying, I know he's, he's, he's not there yet, but a guy like TJ Watt and a guy like Michael Parsons, they can play. I mean, if they want to, they can play with their hand on the ground or they could play up. So I hope he doesn't get too big. I hope Penn state uses him in that hybrid role, but fascinating player. I don't know that he needs to get any bigger. I think if he does, Johnny get too much bigger, I don't know how much he's going to play like as almost like a hybrid out three, four outside linebacker. I think he's going to have to be a pure, a pure pass rusher, but they get paid too. So yeah, I'm with you. I think you're going to have to fight off Mark Brennan to get that question in because he's, he's a master at getting the first question in. I hope you get it first, but I think he's like minus 160 to get the first question. And it's going to be about Abdul Carter. Johnny, are there any other, so assuming you can't get to ask about Abdul, is there anyone else you have kind of in your, in your targets? Well, you said that Mark Brennan would be minus 160. I would put Rich Garcello among the leaders as well, if he's <laughs> able to make it, make it from Redding. Uh, yeah. Just one more note though on Abdul. I was curious as you were talking about TJ Watt and Michael Parsons. Yeah. Uh, TJ Watt, 6'4", 251. Yeah. Michael Parsons, 6'3", 245. Right there, yeah. So he doesn't have to really gain more weight yeah. if he wants to be an effective player, not only at, in the Big Ten, but at the NFL level, which is what we all think Abdul will be, you know, working opposite Deny Dennis Sutton, who was another one, Bob, that, you know, he – I just remember last year, and even when, when he arrived on campus, uh, the defensive end out of Maryland uh, – excuse me, Delaware, but he played high school in Maryland um, – you know, he looked like a man when he was 18 years yeah. old. And he didn't get here early. I think he got here in September, and James is already raving about him. Yeah, exactly. And, and so I'm just I'm curious to see. You know, there. Anytime I write a, a story or reference to yeah. Dennis Sutton in a story, uh, you know, in our in our you know publishing system, you you look up for photos to go with the story. And there's a photo that I believe Joe Hermit got last year of Deny at Max Out Day, and his <laughs> neck is like out to here. He's got like this crazy face on. And that's just an identity of Sutton. He's, yeah. he's kind of a beast. And, you know, so interested to see, you know, as he takes a step into, into more, you know, of a, a real starting role. I mean, he was kind of the third starter yeah. last year mm -hmm. with Chop and a decent, you know, running most of the reps. But, um, you know, Denai is going to be relied on heavily this year uh, mm -hmm. to be a firm starter opposite Abdul Carter. So interested to see what kind of progress uh, he has made. Uh, if you look on, on the opposite side of the ball, you know, you lose two offensive tackles, yeah. you know, Lou Fashanu and Caden Wallace. You lose your center and Hunter Norzad, who also got the invite to the combine among the 10 Penn State players uh, who will be there. Mm -hmm. It's to see how the younger guys uh, have progressed in Javen Williams, Alex Birchmeyer, Anthony Donka, mm -hmm. uh, and then also Nolan Rucci coming in from Wisconsin, transferring wow. in. Absolutely. Uh, an older guy, but uh, one that you definitely, you know, he got in and, and enrolled early in January, along with Julian Fleming, AJ Harris, Shaylen Kimber in that uh, transfer class. But you want to see some progress from him early. And, uh, you know, he's going to be pushing for time, you know, in, I guess in two weeks here, Bob is when spring camp starts. Yeah. Yeah. I think we, t I think like, I think James had talked about him and he said he's every bit of six, eight, you know, and he talked about his time at Wisconsin, but he also said he thought he played really well in the bowl game when their starter got hurt at left tackle. Um, he's an athlete, but I wonder if maybe they're trying to get him 
in the 315 to 320 range. Or he, it might be hard for him to hold the weight, but I think that's the goal for the Penn State training staff. And I think if he could get, you know, I think any added weight for him would probably be good weight. So that's that's another good one. Johnny, two, a couple for me. One's a theme. So, you know, we're going to, I mentioned Amari Evans. So this is my, I want to, this is what I, my hope is for, the skill position guys, I'm going to start with the wideouts and then the tight ends. For the wideouts, it's not really um, – I, I want the wideouts who maybe aren't necessarily super-duper quick or fast to get a little bit faster. Um, I don't know if Harrison Wallace is a guy that I put in that category or, you know, I know K- Caden Saunders is more of a slack guy. But I think there are probably a couple of guys on the roster that could probably use, get a little bit quicker. But I also think there's some guys that were not great blockers that need to add some weight and get a little bit stronger. And I mentioned Omari Evans, who's who's known for his speed. I think he could use some size. I also think Keandre Lambert Smith. I think he obviously he can run, but there were I I did I was not necessarily the biggest fan of him maybe trying to block down the field on a running play. So I think maybe a couple guys get a little bit stronger, a couple guys get a little bit quicker. And then Johnny in the tight end room, right? They're replacing Theo Johnson. Khalil Dinkins is probably a guy I think that's getting that's gained some weight that probably could gain a little bit more. But I'm most curious about a guy like Luke Reynolds. And just to see, I saw there was a picture of him on social media. He looks like he's already gotten stronger and a little bit bigger. But I'm just curious how Chuck Losey feels like he's come in terms of maybe strength and size gains because he's a guy that, yeah, he's a five-star prospect for, for him to get on the field. I think he's probably going to be in, have to be in the 230, 235 range. Yeah, I agree. And just another tight end to add on that, Andrew Rappel, yeah, who, yes. uh, yeah, I think could play a role for this team this upcoming season after redshirting last year. You didn't really need to play him when you had Theo, Tyler, and, and Khalil Dinkins you know, chipping in as that number three guy. But now that Theo is gone, you mentioned Luke Reynolds, Andrew Rappel, yeah, could be one as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then th- another position, just sticking on the offense, Bob, and you know, we talked about this, I believe it was last week or the week prior, uh, the running back room. And and not so much with uh, you know Nick and Katron because I think yeah. we'll probably stand pat. Um, if anything, maybe Nick, you know, just the lateral, you know, east yeah. speed because we know what he can yeah. do north to south when he gets the ball in space. Just you know, look at that little screen that got flipped out to him at Michigan State, and he just bursts down the sideline for fifty yards. Yeah. We know what he can do uh, from that standpoint. Maybe the lateral east west, uh, you know, speed quickness. Maybe that's a decision making thing uh, that he can improve on in spring ball. Uh, but behind them, yeah, you, know, you look at Cam Wallace, who was undersized under the radar, uh, you know, coming in as a 2023 mm-hmm. late signee. Uh, London Montgomery, we talked about his injury that he sustained uh, and and missed his entire senior season at Scranton Prep, and you know was still trying to add some weight. And, and Jaywan Sider had mentioned that uh, in the past. And so when you've got Quentin Martin coming in, who I'm intrigued to see how he's been testing, yeah. how he's been faring so far in winter workouts, the, you know, the, the star from Bell Vernon who signed in the 24 class, when you look at that competition behind Nick and Catron, uh, at running back, I think it's a really intriguing one, not one that will yeah. necessarily sell the headlines or anything, Bob, but ones that, you know, as, as you know, people who follow the team very closely, and I know our, our listeners do as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty intrigued by that. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And remember, Catron left the Northwestern game. I mean, injuries more often than not, they're going to happen. Hopefully they're not significant. But I think Penn State, uh, it's, you know, kudos to the team, the conditioners for getting them ready. But usually as you go through a season, it's you're not going to play maybe every game or you're going to be limited. Some of the best players have dealt with that in the Big Ten. And a third running back, I think, is, is a bigger priority, I think, than people realize, especially if you're also going to look a little bit to the future, because it could be a very different running back room in 2025. Let's just, let's just say that. Um, so Johnny, the combine, the combine in Indianapolis, you've been there a couple of times now that you're in Philly, a little bit harder to get to Indianapolis. You're, we're going to, we're going to watch it from afar this year, but man, Penn state is, is well represented, not as well represented as Michigan. Who I think it's 18 guys. Penn state has 10, um, it's going to play out over Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Six defensive guys, uh, four offensive guys. Not all of them are probably going to do all the tests. But here's I'm just going to throw it out there. I know you've been following along too. Johnny, who is going to run the faster 40? Chop Robinson or Curtis Jacobs? Oh, man. 
That's going to be a good one. That's going to be a good I, one. I would set a prop for that because I think it could be a lot, a lot. I think it could be, first of all, I think the times are going to be impressive, but I think it could be a little bit more debatable than people realize. Because yeah, Chop's that fast. Yeah, I will. You know what? I'll go with, I'll go with Chop, um, but I think it'll be close. And I, I still think you're going to come away really impressed with Curtis Jacobs. Oh, yeah. And I think, and I and this kind of becomes a theme too over the years where you know when it, it was you know when it was Dwight Gall now it's Chuck Losey. Yeah. It, it seems like whenever Penn State players go to the combine they perform well uh, in the field testing, and then there's like the you know whether it's Daniel Jeremiah or whoever, mm-hmm. uh, Dane Brugler you know those national NFL uh, draft evaluators yeah. will be like yo. What is in the you know what's in the water at Penn State? Like they they do such a good job of developing these guys and having mm-hmm. them prepared, um, you know, for the combine for the NFL. And I think you're going to see that again, uh, you know, with Chop, who you know, if, if you look at his, where he is right now in terms of his draft stock, a lot of people yep. have him like the 25 to 30 range. Yep. I, I think the combine is a platform for him to really assert himself, boost himself, and you know, jump up some draft boards and. Uh, maybe solidify his spot in the first round. Curtis Jacobs right now seems like a, you know, and linebacker is kind of a, a weird position uh, for is. teams to draft. They, they look for value, you know, in later rounds. But, mm-hmm. you know, Curtis could vault himself and secure himself in the top 100 uh, if he's able to go out and run a great 40. I look at Kalen King and Johnny Dixon, you know, two guys who had, uh, you know, Kalen, especially an up and down 2023 season mm-hmm. after a phenomenal season in 2022. Yeah. Um, and, and both of those guys had up and down experiences at the senior bowl, but both ran really fast. I mean, they were among the 10 fastest uh, players uh, out of 139 players in Mobile uh, when they did the speed testing. Okay. And so I think both those guys could perform well as well on the field. These The interviews are going to be really important for these guys yes. too. Like obviously, we're going to be watching like what's going on at Lucas Oil Stadium that's going mm-hmm. to be televised on NFL Network. Um, you know, But when you talk about Shop and his his translation to the yeah. NFL and you know, can he be an outside linebacker in a, in a 3-4, same deal with Adisa Isaac. Um, when you look at Kalen King, you look at Curtis Jacobs and – uh, th- there's a lot of a lot of what will determine where they get drafted. I feel like will come from these interviews and how you know they present themselves and, and and the tape breakdowns and their understanding. And all these guys are bright guys, and I think they'll do well in that area. But that's just something to keep in mind too, because yeah. you know we're only going to see so much at Lucas Oil Stadium. We'll find out more you know when reports come out, like you know this this guy is you know met with X amount of teams, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Johnny, I think of all the Penn State players, the fastest one's going to be Day Day. It's going to be Daquan Hardy. Um, they had some I like that. I like that pick. Yeah, I, I think. I mean, he he is definitely football fast. We saw it as a punt returner this year and in coverage. I think I think he will be one of the one of the very fastest players at the combine. I'm I'm rooting for I'm really rooting for him because I think the the better he tests, the more he that slot nickel corner position the more he can probably lock in a, a sort of, a, you know, a definite draft position. I think he will run well. Also, you know, just following this from the very start of, of you know, January since the season ended, I, I think that two of the players that have really helped them the most were uh, East West Shrine guys. I think it's Caden Wallace and Hunter Norzad. Uh, just following along on social media and the people that are putting the stuff out that are, uh, you know, rep, uh, reputable. They both, I mean, I, I think a lot, I think Caden Wallace is now viewed as a potential starting right tackle, um, maybe not in year one. And I think that people are starting to feel the same way about Hunter Norzad as a center. And, you know, maybe at the start of the 2023 season, I don't know how many people really felt that way. I know that I, I, I will say that uh, I was probably a little bit wrong about Caden. I wasn't sure he was ever going to get it all together. He, he played as a tw- in 2023, as a or 2020, as a young player, and then in 2021, I mean, he was young, but he had some struggles. I, I think you were right. You said it was his best year, and I think he's actually really impressed the NFL for for the work he's done. Um, you know, you know, at the Shrine Game and and you know, meeting with teams. And if you remember, James Franklin always singled him out last year as a guy that was just if he ever put it all together physically, you know, with with, with all the tools that he had. He hasn't been around more impressive offensive linemen. So th- those are two more guys, I think. If they interview well and they test well, I, th- I mean, we're looking at Johnny a potentially get seeing all 10 of these guys. 
get drafted. That would be the last time Penn State had 10 drafted was 1996. The most under Franklin was 8, 2022. I think there's a good chance all 10 of these guys get drafted, but a lot of it's going to happen in the next month or so, starting with the combine. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, you talked about Hunter Norris ad. Uh, I go back to Juice Scruggs, and I remember, yeah. you know, when he left Penn State and he had a decision, do I come back, do I leave? Um, and he decided to leave. And I think the initial thought on him was like, I like fourth, fifth round pick maybe. And then he, he ultimately goes in the second round. And I, I think a lot of it had to do with the combine and his pro yep. days and the interviews. Um, and, you know, despite injury in his first year at the Houston Texans, I mean, he was starting for them and that was a playoff team. Yep. Uh, so you've seen, and that's just one example, one of many examples of guys who really developed at Penn state. And once they get in that NFL atmosphere and that pre-draft process, they know how to handle themselves. They know what they're doing. Uh, and Hunter's a really smart guy. Caden is a very smart guy. Yeah. Um, I, I think Daquan Hardy is a, is not only a bright kid, but an extremely good athlete. Yeah. And you mentioned that speed. You know, he showed it as a nickel corner. He showed it as a punt returner this past year. Um, I mean, just flip on the highlight reel, and it's obvious that he can be a difference maker, you know, at the next level. And, you know, nickel corner is, again, kind of similar – um, to linebacker in yeah. that it's a very specific position. You know, it's not like he's going to go in the early rounds, but, you know, a, a team with a need there, you know, you could do far worse than having Daquan Hardy uh, on your roster and, and a veteran and a guy that came in as a, a three-star, kind of a late addition to, you know, his recruiting class. And, you know, just the way he developed under Terry Smith, I think, uh, you know, they could have, you know, three corners drafted. Uh, in this class and really intrigued to see how all these guys perform out in Indianapolis. Like you said, we're recording this on Wednesday, yeah. uh, defensive linemen and linebackers work out at Lucas oil stadium on Thursday. I believe the D backs are on Friday and so on and so forth. So we'll be keeping very close tabs on how all those guys are doing. Johnny, I got one more for you on the combine. I know you did a lot of great work uh, talking to Dane Brugler and, and really he, he Dane must, Dane must be an awesome guy. Can you imagine the, the volume of interview requests he gets? Crazy. And he seems like the kind of guy that if he's got an extra, if he's got a free 10 minutes during the most hectic time of his life, he'll give him, he'll give him away. But I mean, it's, it, he's come I really enjoy, uh, it, it's, that, that cannot be an easy job just grinding every day for, I don't know, he might take a couple weeks off, but. I really enjoyed the stuff he was able to give you. So one more for you on Penn State in the combine. Um, I know that Theo Johnson ran a 4-5-1 at Penn State a couple of years ago. He's got a little bit bigger. He's clearly a, he, uh, an, a nice athlete, impressed at the Senior Bowl. Johnny, will he approach, or better, 4-5-1 if he runs his 40? I think he will. And I think Theo Ooh. will. I think Theo will continue the upward trajectory. And again, this is assuming that he runs Yeah. Uh, because as we record this on Wednesday, you know, it, it tends to happen where it feels like a quarter of the guys or half the guys, whatever yep. decide not to run or, you know, they pull their hammy and they don't want to put out a bad time. They'll wait till pro sure. day. So that could happen with any of these guys. So just kind of as a, a late, yeah. very late disclaimer. Uh, but we've seen Theo speed in the open field. Uh, you know, we've seen it at Penn State for a few years now and coming off of his senior bowl, you know, and talking to Dane, you know, he named Theo as one of his winners of the senior bowl. Other outlets did as well. It's not like it was just a, you know, one guy picking Theo. I mean, Theo really impressed uh, down in Mobile among the tight ends that were there. And you look at Brock Bowers is going to be the top guy, maybe a top 15 pick. You got, you know, Jatavian Sanders from, you know, Texas, mm -hmm. but behind him, I mean, it's wide open for Theo to be, you know, the third, you know, tight end off the board. And, mm -hmm. you know, I was a little surprised that Brenton Strange went in the second round last year. Right. There's a chance Theo does as well. And, yeah. and if not, if even if he lands in the third round, yeah. uh, a team is going to be getting a very good player in him. And I think, I think he's one of those guys who's really poised uh, to take advantage of this opportunity at the NFL Combine. Yeah. Busy, busy uh, weekend for Penn State players at the Combine. Johnny's going to be super duper, super busy uh up in state college hopefully later this week assuming the weather holds with a uh, uh training availability and getting to talk to chuck losey i'm still a little miffed that i've never been to bucky's but you know what johnny i'll get over it i'm gonna try and i'm gonna try and get there i think it's bucky's right that's the name of it the place we're talking yep. about yep. that hat yep. is just stunning in its in its simplicity the color scheme it, it's a 9.2 
on my scale. I wear a lot of hats and visors. That's a 9.2. I'm a little jealous, but Johnny, it's good talking with you. We're going to have a lot to talk about post-combine, post-Penn State uh, strength availability. And next week, it'll be March. And Johnny, we're, we're going to be gearing up for the start of spring practice. So enjoy, Johnny. Enjoy your trip to State College. Will do, Bob. Thank you.